Hi and welcome to Neat AI. So the last few videos have all been about voids. So let's finish the series with a little bit of spatial hashing. I've been especially interested in the different approaches that can be taken to speed up the animation as the number of calculations needed per frame increases exponentially with the number of voids. Ideally, we want a direct relationship between the number of voids and the number of calculations performed with each frame. So if I have 200 voids, I only want to do 200 calculations. This is something that spatial hashing allows you to do. In the last video, I focused on the quad tree data structure, which is a vast improvement over the basic approach and allows for at least an n log n performance position to be approached. And when you put an updating quad tree on screen, it makes nice YouTube videos. The issue, of course, is that every void should only interact with voids in their visual range. But as things keep changing all the time, each void has to ask every other void where it is. So it can work out if it needs to interact with it. It also needs to ask, is it in the same flock? Is it aligned, correctly separated? Is it a predator? Is it in its field of view? And so on. And every void needs to do this with each and every frame. So without taking steps to improve performance, you have the basic n squared relationship, which will rapidly get unmanageable as you increase the number of voids in your simulation. So this paper has a nice introduction to the topic and it goes into some detail on some of the applications of a spatial hash table and the hash function that it uses. It focuses on a number of different areas ranging from object to object collision detection, all the way through to AI decision considerations with a focus on proximity and location detection. But of course, our focus is going to be on how spatial hashing allows for objects on a 2D grid to be projected into a one dimensional hash table. It does reiterate the performance boost you can expect to see in moving to a hashing model as opposed to a quad tree data structure. It goes beyond the simple point locations which I use for voids and considers bounding volume implications for a hash table setup as well as object collision detection on a frame by frame basis, but also collisions which occur over a specified time frame. This allows for more precise collision detection for small or fast moving objects. It also looks at field of view implications for object detection and rendering, showing how the hash table can quickly determine which objects in the scene can be ignored. And then there's AI and decision-making calculations, both for proximity-based or zones of interest, exploits within designated areas of the domain space. But for now, let's just focus on the grid, hash table, and object index. There are three requirements it stipulates as being necessary for spatial hashing to work. The grid concept is easy enough. You simply section off your 2D plane into a grid and number each section. This is all conceptual, of course. In reality, there is no grid object and you don't need to draw any lines on the screen. But all of your objects will need to be assigned to one of these grid locations. So for our voids, I'll need to extend their properties to capture this grid reference. So in addition to its X and Y location and its delta X and Y vector components, I'll add in a grid ID. For the example given, we know some things about the grid. It's 100 pixels across. Each cell is a 25 by 25 pixel square. The grid is four cells wide and there are 16 cells or buckets in total. To work out which cell a void is in, you just need to use the formula shown. And if we need to give that formula a name, we'd call it the hash function. So now every time a void updates its location, it will also update its grid reference. And the final step is the hash table itself. Its purpose is to maintain a record of which objects are in which grid cells, so it has an entry for each grid cell. At the end of each frame, I simply blank this table and ask each void for its grid reference and update the table. So cell one, for example, has four objects in it, and you can see that reflected in the hash table. And what's the point of this? Well, each void needs to know who its neighbors are. And now, instead of having to ask each void how far away it is, or going to a quad tree data structure, it simply extracts that information from the hash table, using its own grid ID as a lookup reference. And you're going to see this approach replicated in other papers. This one here adds another component in the form of a pivot table, which they say speeds things up by a factor of three. Although I haven't implemented that as yet. 
For my setup, I've gone one step further and also get each Boyd to note the cell IDs of its eight neighboring cells. In this way, it can also use the Boyds located there when working out where it's moving to next, with next to no impact on performance. This helps in doing away with artifacts that can arise from having a Boyd's entire world being confined to just one cell.